So this chapter, we will discuss about association rule. We will learn about the basic concepts and methods and what are the pattern evaluation methods for this frequent pattern analysis. So what is frequent pattern analysis? In the concept of frequent pattern analysis, usually it starts with the market basket analysis. A market analyst will try to figure out if, let's say, you go to the supermarket okay, or if you go to market, which items are frequently purchased together by customers. So, one customer, you can figure out, this one is called basket, so this is one basket, this is another basket, this is another basket, so we call it the market basket analysis. When we have the basket from the customer one, we can see that, okay, customer one bought milk, bread, and cereal, customer two bought milk, bread, sugar, eggs, customer three bought milk, bread, and butter, customer N, he bought sugar and eggs. So what is the most frequent items? If you look at this one, maybe we can say that most people buy milk, bread, milk, bread, milk, bread. So that's why when in, you go to the supermarket, usually they prepare some products, they attach the products together because they can figure out this on the data. So we will learn about this frequent pattern analysis. We need to see the definition, frequent pattern. We call it frequent pattern. It is a pattern or a set of items or subsequences or substructures that occurs frequently in the data set. This idea has been proposed by the Agrawal and yeah, those people in 1993. So it's already very old. And they propose the frequent item sets and associated rule mining. The motivation is we want to find inherent regularities in data. Inherent. We want to find some interesting regularities. We want to find something that useful useful regularities. Let's say in the supermarket, okay, we want to know what products were often purchased together. Or what are the subsequent purchase after buying a PC? When you bought a personal computer. So what will, what will you buy next? Maybe after you buy a computer, you buy a printer. After you buy a printer, you will buy a new keyboard. Maybe after you buy a new keyboard, you will buy a webcam. So those kind of products, yeah, we can check the frequent pattern of the sequences. Or if you are dealing with the biology, you may know about the DNA. Okay, in the DNA, they have the structures. And we can check whether the structures is related to the sensitivity to particular drug or not. So in the COVID-19, you know that the people try to develop drugs, vaccine. So they analyze also this kind of things based on the DNA. And we can say this is the frequent pattern analysis. Or can we automatically classify web documents? 
So if there are some words, whether the words will appear with other words or not. So there are many applications. You can use it for the basket data analysis. You can use for cross marketing, catalog design, sale campaign analysis, click stream analysis, DNA sequence analysis, and etc. So the frequent pattern means, yeah, it is the intrinsic and important. Intrinsic. It is hidden. You cannot know. And if you try to extract it, you will get some insight about the data. Important, something that is useful for your organization. And this frequent pattern mining, it is the foundation for many essential data mining tasks. It can be about the association, or correlation or causality. It is about the sequential or the structural patterns. Or we can also analyze the patterns in the spatial temporal. Do you still remember spatial temporal? Spatial temporal. Because this is spatio, it is from the space. Okay. Space means we have in the earth, we have the coordinate, or we can say this is the latitude and longitude. Okay. Temporal. Temporal means the time. Okay. When we deal with the spatial temporal, we deal with the space and the time. So we can see the patterns. Let's say I want to know what time is the worst time to drive in Seoul. So we can analyze those as the spatial temporal analysis. Multimedia time series. Stream data, so most of them will use the frequent pattern mining. And we can also use the classification, we can use the cluster analysis for further approach after we get the frequent pattern. There are many broad applications for this one. So let's see the basic concepts of these frequent patterns. We will start with the item set. What is the meaning by item set? Let's see in this table. We have TID. TID means the transaction ID. If you go to supermarket, after you buy some products, then you will get the receipt. So the receipt that you get, we call it the transaction ID. Yong okay. Sujung, one receipt will have the ID. So the maybe one receipt it contains bread, bread and milk. The other receipt, maybe the other customer, it contains bread, diaper, beer, and eggs. Another receipt. It contains milk, diaper, beer, and coke. Another receipt, it contains bread, milk, diaper, and beer. Another receipt is bread, milk, diaper, and coke. So in total, we have five transactions. Okay. An item set, it is a collection of one or more items. So in this case, I have, let's say, milk, bread, diaper. So this is one item set. We can have K item set. An item set that contains K items. So K, it can be equal to one. 
So if k equals to one, then in one item set there is only one item. If k equals to two, then in one item set there are two items. If k equals to three, then in one item set there are three items. For example, this is when k equals to one. When k equals to one, we can set the only bread, milk, diaper, beer, coke, and eggs. And we can measure the count. What is the count? We can check how many times bread appears. So we can see bread one, two, three, four. What about milk? Okay, we can also check one, two, three, four. When k equals to two, then we will check two items: bread and milk, bread and diapers. So there will be many combinations. Let's say I have bread and milk. Okay, this one. No bread and milk. No bread and milk. Okay, we have bread and milk. Bread and milk. So we have in total three. We can also have another K, which is K equals to three. So bread, milk, diaper. Again, we can calculate. Bread, milk. Okay, there is no diaper. Bread, diaper. Okay, there is no milk. Milk, diaper. Okay, there is no bread. Bread, milk, diaper. Okay, this one. Bread, milk, diaper. Okay, this one. So there are two. Okay, because this is how. We call it this is absolute support or support how. With the symbol, it means is the frequency of occurrence of an item set. Milk, bread, diaper. With this symbol, we can calculate there are two times. Okay. Milk, bread, diaper. Milk, bread, diaper. So there are two among five transactions. If we deal with the relative support, it means we want to see the fraction of transaction that contain of an item set. Or we can say this is the probability that a transaction contain X. In total, yeah, we have the support count is two and the transaction there are five. So we have two divided by five for the relative support. We call frequent item set if the item set has the support which is greater than or equal to a minimum support threshold. So usually this minimum support threshold it is given. So later we will check what is the meaning by this one. After we we'll check on the frequent item set, we can see the association rules what is association rules the association rules we have x and we have y we have s we have s we call it this is support and we have c we call this is confidence Okay. It is an implication expression in the form of X association with Y, where X and Y are item sets. So we have X is an item set and Y is an item set. So I want look I want to know the association rule between the mid diaper and 
Is there any association with beer? There are two metrics. The first metric, we call it support. This is the fraction of transaction that contain both X and Y. Both contain X and Y. The confidence means it is a measure of how often items in Y appears in transaction that contain X. Hmm. Let's see with example. Um, okay, maybe with the example it's more clear. So I have this milk and diaper, which is the X, and I have the beer, which is the Y. Okay. Now I want to know is there any association between the milk diaper and beer? Or in the real world, I can say, is there any possibility if someone, if the customer bought milk and diaper, he or she will buy beer? So we can calculate. Based on the support, the support will be divided by the number of transactions. So we can calculate the count. Milk, diaper, beer. Milk, diaper, beer, no. Milk, diaper, beer, no. Milk, diaper, beer. Okay, one. Red, milk, diaper, beer. Okay, milk, diaper, beer. Okay. Milk, diaper, four. So we have only two supports and divided by the number of transactions, which is five. So we can get zero point. What about confidence? For the confidence, we need to check the count of milk, diaper, beer. Two. And because I want to know how big my confidence. If someone bought beer, um, I have confidence if someone bought milk and diaper, he or she will buy beer. So I need to divide it with the milk and diaper only. So the milk and diaper, milk and diaper, milk and diaper, milk and diaper. Oh, there are three. Okay, means from those three, there are only two transactions where the customer bought beer. Okay. So the confidence is 67%. Okay, so it is not divided but by the total number of transactions, but it is only divided by the total of X. So the support and the confidence, it will be given. So it will be given. So this is the information. If I have the minimum support is 0 0.5 or 50%, and if I have the minimum confidence is 0 0.5, what is the frequent band? Okay, now you have five transactions. 5 multiplying by 50%. What is the result? Yeah, this 2.5. Then the frequent pattern means the occurrence or the frequency should be greater than 2.5. Okay, we will check. If k equals to 1, then beer. There are three. Okay, one, two, three. Bread, there are four. Okay. And then diaper, there are four. And milk, there are four. When K goes to two, okay, we have beer and diaper. There are three. Okay. So the remaining will not be included because it is lower than 2.5. The condition should be 
higher than 2.0. So we will just include this one. We call this is the treatment pen. And yeah, as you might know, this is the S, this is the support, and this is the confidence. Usually the confidence can be obtained if you have two items at least. So I can have the peer association with diaper. What is the result? The total of beer and diaper, which is three. Okay, this is three. Divided by the total of beer. One, two, three. Okay, three divided by three, then it is 100%. One. So this is 100%. What about diaper and beer? Diaper and beer, we have three divided by the number of transaction contains diaper. We have one, two, three, four. Okay. So among four transactions with diaper, only three of them called beer. So I have the confidence 75%. Okay. okay, what is item set? It is the a collection of one or more items. Okay, so it can be one item, it can be two items, it can be three items, and so on. What is support? We have two kinds of support. Absolute support or support count. It is the count or the occurrence or the frequency of the item in the transaction. Okay. We can have another support, we call it relative support. It is the fraction of transaction that the items appear. What is confidence? Confidence it is a measure to check that item Y, let's suppose we have X and Y, is measured to check that item Y occurs when the transaction contain x okay. so you can check from the previous definition so we will learn more about the frequent item set mining In the frequent item set mining methods, there are many algorithms. So the basic algorithm, we call it a priori algorithm. It is a candidate generation and test approach. And there are some other algorithms to improve the a priori. FP growth, which is a frequent pattern growth approach. ECLAT, it is frequent pattern mining with practical data format, okay. but I will just focus on the first one, a priori. We call a priori, it is the candidate generation and test approach. Any subset of a frequent item set must be frequent. Can you understand me?
any subset of a frequent parent set must be frequent. So if I have a set A, B, C, and this is frequent, then any subset, what is meaning by any subset? It can be A, B, it can be A, C, it can be B, C, it can be A, it can be B, it can be C. Okay. So the subset or if A, B, C is frequent, then this subset is also this subset is also frequent. Okay. If A, B, C frequent, then A is frequent, B is frequent, C is frequent, A, C is frequent, B, C is frequent, A, B is frequent. Okay. If a certain item set is frequent, its subset is also frequent. Okay. So this is the meaning. So if we have beer, diaper, and X, if it is frequent, then beer diaper is frequent. Now, let's learn about mathematics. I'm not sure if some of you joined the Kenyan Suha. Okay, in our department, we have the Kenyan Suha. This is mathematics. Okay. There is one law. We call it the Morgan law. It is based on this proposition. If A is true and B is true, so it's true. Which one is the most representative for this proportion? Proposition. Is it true? Or is it true? Or is it true? If A imply B is true, is it B imply A is true? Or if not A imply not B is true? Or not B implies not A is true? Okay, this on the Morgan's law. This one is true. Okay, not this one and not this one. So the a priori pruning principle means if a certain item set is not frequent, its superset is not frequent. Is a little bit confusion. So I can say like this A, B, C. Okay, we know that if A, B, uh, if A, B, C is frequent, then A, B frequent, B, C frequent, A, C frequent, A frequent, B frequent, C frequent. So if this one frequent, then this one frequent. So we call this is the A is true, then B is true. So now we make the negation or the opposite. If not B, then it is not A. So the Meaning is, if the subset is not frequent, then the superset is not frequent. Okay. 
then it means if the a b b c a c a b c is not frequent then the a b c is not frequent okay that's the logic so this is based on the mathematical model so if type beer and diaper is not frequent then beer diaper and x is not frequent that's the meaning so the a priori algorithm it is here yeah. if there is any idle set which is infrequent okay, its superset should not be generated its superset should not be tested okay. so if one set is not frequent then the superset or the upper one should not be tested should not be generated infrequent infrequent means not frequent okay this is not frequent okay this is the matter maybe i will just go to the example okay we have TDB. TDB it is it stands for the transactional TV. Okay. Given a TDB, and then I have also the minimum support 0 0.5, and I have minimum confidence 0 0.7. Step one: find the frequent atom set. We have this data list. Transaction ID 10, it contains ACT. Transaction ID 20, it contains BCE. Transaction ID 30, it contains ABC. Transaction ID 40, it contains DE. Now, we know that the minimum support is 0 0.5. So, we can have the minimum support equals to 2. Why? Okay. All right. That's good. Thank you. So we have four transactions and the support is 0 0.5. What multiply 0 0.5, which is 2. So there should be at least two items. Okay. There should be two frequency whenever we do the scanning. So the first scan, we will use the k equals to 1. So when the item set equals to 1, we will check. Okay, a. How many a? Okay, we have 2. How many b? Okay, we have three. How many C? Okay, we have three. How many D? Oh, we have one. And how many E? We have three. But the minimum support should be two. Then we will remove B because B is only one. Now, yeah, this is the candidate and this is the list of frequent item set when k equals to 1. Now we can move to the next k equals to 2. Now we can check the option. So we can just combine from this item set. Okay. Combine just a and b, a and c. A and E, and then B and C, B and E, and C and E, because we want to find every two items. And then again we scan. A B, how many A B? Oh, we have only one. How many A C? We have two. A E is one. B C is two. B E is three. 
P and C is two. So the support minimum is two. So we will remove this one and this one. Then we will get the frequent item set when the k equals to two is this one. Okay. We will go to the next k equals to three. When k equals to three, okay, I can generate b, c, and e. Why? Based on the a priori principle, it mentioned that if any item set is not frequent, then the super set is also not frequent. I have B, C, E. Can I generate A, C, E? If I generate A, C, E, it means A, C is frequent, A, E is frequent, and C, E is frequent. A, C is frequent? Okay. A, E is frequent? No. Okay. Because there is one which is not frequent, then you do not need to generate A, C. So, one more. Why don't we generate A, B, C? In A, B, C, we need to check the A, B, A, C, and B, C. A, B, is it frequent? No. Because A, B is not frequent, then we do not need to generate A, B, C. Okay, so the only option is B, C, E, then we scan how many frequency of B, C, E. Then we get the final frequent item sets. After we have the final frequent item sets, we need to calculate the association rule. How we can calculate the association rules? Yeah, we have already the L1, which is the I frequent item set when k equals to 1, frequent item set when k equals to 2, frequent item set when k equals to 3. So we can select the two AC. We do the combination AC and CA. We select BC. We make the combination B C and C B. B E. We make combination B E and E B. C E. We can make combination C E and E C. And we calculate the confidence. Okay, let's see. A C. How many A C? Is two. But how many A? Okay, we have two. Then it is one. What about C A? A, C, we have 2, divided by the C. C, we have 3. So, 2 divided by 3. Then the value is 0 0.67. So, you can calculate for all. And you will just get the confidence, which is higher than 0 0.7. So, the result will be only the blue color. This is when k equals to 2. We still have another option when k equals to 3. So we will do again the combination. We will check B, C and E. B, E and C. C, E and B. B and C, E. C and B. E and B, C. So you can get those numbers and we just select the confidence which is higher than 0 0.7 because this is the final association rules. 
we just select the value which is higher than 0 0.7. So this is the a priori algorithm. Okay. We have the candidate C and we have L, which is the frequent item cells. Uh, yeah, if you want to look in the pseudocode, yeah, you can see this one. So the implementation is like this one. The first is we will do the self joining. What's the meaning by self joining? When you have like the first one, A, and then you have B, and then you have C, and then you have E. So you can do self joining. A comma B, A comma C, A comma E. Okay, and then B comma C, B comma E, and then C comma E. Okay, so this is self joining. You can just join between the items. And then the next step is pruning. Pruning means delay. We will delay if the any item set is not frequent, then the super set is not frequent. So let's say if we have A, B, C, A, B, B, A, C, B, A, C, E, B, C, D. So we can do the self joining from this. We can make A, B, C, D. Okay, A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. Okay. And okay, we can make A, C, D. We can make A, C, D. Okay. This is the self joining. And we need to prune. So A C D E is removed because A D E is not in the L3. So in the L3, it does not contain A D. Okay, based on the a priori, it should contain the subset. If the subset A D E is not available, then you do not need to generate the superset. So we can just remove. Okay, that's another example. This is a transactional data. Now we have the minimum support 0 0.2 and the minimum confidence is 0 0.7. The problem is find the frequent item sets and find the association group. The same with the previous example. So you can see here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, nine transaction multiplied by zero point two. So you have like one point eight. Then you need to select the frequency of the yeah. items which is higher than one point eight. The same with the previous one. We will scan the candidate when k equals to 1. We have i1, i2, i3, i4, i5. And then the support s is 1.8. Okay, everything is un higher than 1.8. So we select it. And then we will generate c2 so when k equals to 2. So we make the combination I1, I2, I1, I3, I1, I4, and then we check the count. Based on the count, okay, we can remove this one because it is no more than one point. We can remove this one, we can remove this one, we can remove this one. So the remaining will be this. And next we will generate the K equals to three. So the k equals to 3, then you can check based on this L2. So some of them are not available. So you don't need to make all combinations. So this is the only combination with the higher 
support count higher than one point eight. So this is the L3, and this L3 is the frequent item set. After you find the frequent item set, then you need to get the convenience, or you need to check the association rule. So the association rule, yeah, we have the K equals to two. So you want to check for every two items. I1 association with I2. I2 association with I1. I1 associate with I3. I3 association with I1 and so on. What is the minimum confidence? Okay, 0 0.7. Then we will select only the higher confidence. This one, this one, and this one. And then we have k equals to 3. So we will also do for every possibility. And we will check the confidence. And we just check the confidence which is higher than 0.7. This one, this one, and this one. So we get the association rule, which is higher than 0.7. We have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. okay, so we learned about the a priori algorithm. And if there is any item set which is infrequent, its superset should be not yes, should not be generated or should not be tested. True or false? If one item set is not frequent, then the super set should not be tested. Okay, it is two. Okay, okay I think that's the end. Any questions?